Hey, it's Marie Forleo, and you are watching Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. Now, I am so excited to bring you today's guest. If you're someone who's ever tried something and failed or stumbled and wondered if you really had it in you to make yourself a success, you're going to love this show. For the first four decades of her life, Susie Batiz ignored her intuition and faced some of life's biggest struggles, including domestic abuse, failed businesses, and bankruptcy. But today, Susie is the founder and CEO of Poopery. She's created a $300 million company without borrowing a dime or enlisting a single investor. A viral video, which now has over 39 million views, launched her company into a cultural phenomenon. Susie's been honored by Ernst & Young and featured by Forbes, CNBC, and the Inc. 5000 as a top entrepreneur. Susie, it is so great to have you here. I feel mm -hmm. like this meeting has been meant to be for years. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so um, I know you know this, but we had so much fun a few years back. We did our Love Your Branding Baby about mm -hmm. Poopery. Mm -hmm. That was one of the funnest episodes I've ever scripted, and people got so much out of it. So thank yeah. you for that. Well, thank you, because at the office, we walked in, we were like, oh my God, Marie Forley, I was talking about Poopery. <laughs> we had like this huge party. It was a really big deal for us. Oh, I love thank Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah. So um, Poopery isn't your first time at the business rodeo, and I don't know if a lot of people really know that. You know, you shared in 2000 that you were 40 and you were facing your second bankruptcy, and I love that you said this. You said at one point you deemed yourself the worst entrepreneur in the world. First mm -hmm. of all, I don't know of any creative, including myself, who hasn't said that to themselves yeah. at various points in the journey, but I'm wondering if you can take us back to your life and what that was like prior to poopery. Yeah, I, um, I I had a life of what I call struggle. You know, I was always looking outside myself for something. Like I thought success was if I can ever be successful, then I'll actually have value or be a value in the world or yeah. worth, which was so weird. So I was always like creating these businesses that weren't necessarily passion. N none of them were passionate. It was like, oh, this is a good idea. Let me do this. And then I would get everybody else's input when everybody else thought it was a good idea. And then I would go for it and I was exhausted and I was depleted. So what's amazing when I had my second bankruptcy is not just being bankrupt in the physical world with finance. Like I was bankrupt, like in my whole body, my life, my, my being. And I was like, I am not going back there. Like that world, it sucks. Like it's hell. It was actually... Um, so I just said, I'm not going to be in business ever again. That's it. So you had associated the business world with this complete depletion and bankruptcy on, on every level. Yes, yeah. because that's the only way I knew to do business. Yeah. Push through, make it work, just keep going. You know, so it, there was always this energy and striving and also desperation. Yeah. There was never enough time. Everything was urgent, life or death. And that's the way I live my life. It's like, I got to make it work. And, and I'm really strong, you know, and I could push through some major crap. Um, but what I realized at the second bankruptcy, I'm like, I can't do that anymore. Like, I really couldn't do it. Um, just emotionally, physically. And so I associated business with that. Like, I must be the biggest failure because I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> and so how did you then start to navigate towards the space where that idea for poopery just came alive in your body? Yeah. Um, well, I really found peace inside. So I spent about four years. I had luxury that my husband, we didn't live super extravagant, yeah. but I just said, I got it. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. Like I need to really Reset. get myself my, yeah, right. So I just spent, you know, yoga retreats, lots of workshops. And what I realized is it wasn't money that I really wanted. What I wanted was happiness. I thought money and success was going to get me happy, you know, make me happy somehow, but always striving for it. That's not where happiness was. So I decided I'm going to be happy. And so I was happy. And then all of a sudden, when the idea for poopery was presented to me, my brother-in-law said, can you stop could bathroom odor be trapped? And I remember like a, a zing up my arm and like everything went high def. Like, wow, yeah, it can be. And I can do that with oils because my hobby, my passion was aromatherapy. 
So it's like these worlds co- collided, but I remember it being that aha moment. And I had no idea how to do it or pull it off, or even if I could, it didn't matter. It just felt really good in my body. So that feeling, and I've had that at a few times in my life, and I love it because we can dig into this so much, but there is something physical when it's right. Oh, yeah. When an idea comes through, and it's almost as if it's electric, and it's not up here. It's completely inside. Yeah. It's actually alive is what I call it. Like yes. it feel, you feel alive, and, um, and actually in physics, it's resonance. Yes. So you actually are amplified with the idea. It's like this perfect marriage you know, that you would want with a mate. It's like you want to be more with that mate. You don't want them to complete you because you're already whole. You want to be amplified. And it's the same thing with these ideas. Like I'm getting excited right now. I can feel it in my arms. Yeah. So what I do is try to focus towards those ideas. Yeah. So how was it for you then? Okay. You have this surge. You know this is right. You had this past identification and association with business being a world like, oh, I don't want to go there. How then did you start to make that leap back to go, well, maybe I can, and maybe this could be different this time in terms of the formulations or just experimenting? Mm -hmm. Like, did you compartmentalize and go, you know what, I'm not going to think about this as a business. I'm just going to solve this problem. No. What I did was I was pulled towards this idea. I didn't even think it was going to be a business. It didn't even dawn on me. It was just like, I can make that happen. And also, one thing I say is the idea keeps coming back. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't leave me alone. I'm researching all night. I'm buying oils. I'm mixing. I'm, my friends and family, I'd be like, they come over. I go, do you have to go to the bathroom? And they go, why? I'd be like, um, I need a tester. <laughs> you know, I got number one or number two. But I was constantly, but it didn't matter. Yeah. See, in the past, I was worried about what people thought about my idea. So I'm out outside going, what do you think? With this, it's like I knew it in my bones, and more than my bones, in my gut. Yeah. And and, and it, I never thought about being the company it is today, but it didn't matter. Right. So yeah. let's fast forward a little bit. So I know uh, what most people don't realize is that your company actually was quite successful when you guys did the Girls Don't Poop amazing viral video mm-hmm. that I can't even tell you how many times I watched that thing. It is so, <laughs> so good. So let's talk about that. I think it has over 120 million views now. Mm-hmm. Walk us through a little bit of the inspiration of what inspired you to want to create that. How did that whole thing come about? Yeah, so we were actually, we were a multi-million dollar company. I had a very easy life, 12 weeks vacation a year in Maui, you know, it was Damn, like my company. Girl. It was yeah, yes. it was like it yes. was like groovy, easy world. Yes. And Marie, I felt this almost like what I call this contraction. Yeah. And I was like, we gotta go. People were like, what are you talking about? I said, I just, I just knew it again. Like I felt this. I said, we got, we have to go. And I didn't. I just knew we, it was ready to expand. Mm-hmm. Even though it wasn't something I planned. You know, I don't even have a business plan to this day. I just kind of me neither. <laughs> yeah, I did, you know, it's so organic, yes, right? And we feel organic. these natural contractions when we're listening. And um, yeah, so I found these guys, made the video, and we were told it would not be viral. Yeah, don't expect a viral video. Don't expect a viral video. So so pre-video, you know, wonderful, easy, groovy, happy company. Like everybody in our, you know, every all of our customers love us. It was a happy world. Yeah. <laughs> and then the video comes out. We had done, I think, four million dollars in back order within the first two weeks. Oh, like, and we were only at that point doing like eight million a year. Okay, but wait. so let's just say, I mean, like we, yeah, we got to talk about this because four million in back orders, yeah. and what's like the average product price about? Oh, yeah, ten dollars. Like that is extraordinary, Susie. Yeah, four million in back orders. Well, for, yeah, so we had oh. sold all of our inventory. Then we were $4 million in back order. So if you think about the product we went through, so it sounds like, yay. Right. Oh, my gosh. For an entrepreneur, it was crazy. Like all these emails, people were like, send us our product. And I mean, every email was just like, oh, oh, thousands. You know, we were sleeping on bubble wrap. Like our, 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 our customer service would take turns crying. We literally, because, you know, people are calling, they're mad. They don't have their product. Absolutely. They were sold on it. They loved it. And yes. they're used to getting it delivered right now. Yes. So we actually just were honest. Like we got caught with our pants down. We didn't know this was going to happen. Do you want us to give you your money back? And every single person. I mean, we maybe had two out of the, you know, gazillions of orders yeah. that said, we're going to wait. 
Yeah. Thanks for being honest. It was so great. But it really did really implode our company, like where we were wobbly for quite a few years. Yeah. And we just now got our culture back and our groove back because just to keep up yes. after that big you're explosion. Drowning. You must feel like you're drowning. And it's it's almost oh, this, yeah. um, God, it's almost like an embarrassment of riches. It where is. there's so much and people from the outside can say, how can you, compl- you've got, you know, X million in orders and all these people love you and you have a viral mm-hmm. video. But at the same time, I think what we don't talk about enough is that even if things are going great or you have this big win, that doesn't mean that the day to day is easy. Sometimes it's even more difficult and you can feel like, I know we've had situations, not that exact one, yeah. but we've had situations where things are so great and there's that part of me is like, I am so grateful and I'm so humbled by this, but at the same time, there's things that are difficult or falling apart underneath and you have to yeah. just be able to navigate that. So congrats you to you have guys to be able to navigate it. for staying mm-hmm. in it and also I love hearing that while it's been a few years that you are getting that incredible culture back because there's no way the magic that you bring to this world and you will continue to bring this world, you know, it's not possible without you. So I I love hearing Mm. that you guys are are getting yourselves back on track. It's really good. Thank you. I often say um, when people want to be an entrepreneur and they, they talk with me and they'll present a lot of problems, but the way they present the problems to me is that the problems are a problem. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, they're probably not an entrepreneur or maybe. And and what I tell them is like uh, when you're on a track, you're either, you're just, you're just a straight runner or you're a hurdler. And an entrepreneur knows the hurdles are going to be there. Yes. And that's what we do. That's like, all and you we know, do. you just jump them, right? Everything is figure outable, baby. It's all figure outable. I yes. loved when you said that. I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's, I mean, business really just is one issue. It's, it's it. solving problems one after the other after the other. Yeah. That's the and whole the bigger game. you grow, it's just the hurdles may be a little taller. I guess they keep raising them, the better you get. They do. It's like a video it, game. It is. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk now, because I know you and I share this philosophy. Let's talk about how to know which ideas or opportunities mm. are the ones to really go for. Because one thing we hear a lot from our audience is, which way do I go? You know, there's so many things I could do. There's so many ways I could play this out. There's so many people I could hire. There's so many ways I could direct my life. What are some of the ways that you help yourself make those big decisions? Mm. One of my mentors, um, Gay Hendricks, asked me. I love him. Do you? I love Gay. He gave me the first quote from my first book. Really? Yes. When I, he was so generous. Yeah, I was just talking to him last night. He's such a sweetheart. But I asked him, I said, Gay, how do you know which idea to follow? And he said, the one that makes me feel the most alive. Mm. I'm like, Oh, yeah, like I can feel that in my body, you know? Yes. It's like, that's it. It's that simple. Um, and four years ago, one of my friends, Nick Askew, asked me which idea to follow. And I was trying to tell him what you and I were talking about, these body sensations, and he didn't know. And I called um, Dr. Bruce Lipton. I don't know if you know him. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I said, I have an idea of a theory that ideas are alive. And how can a virus travel across the world and it's living, but a thought or a meme is not necessarily living? Like what's alive and what's not? And he actually told me that everything is an energetic vibration. So ideas are alive. Um, And I became really excited about that. So what I do is I I feel in my body, if I get these chills that we're talking about, I start moving towards. So it's the chills, um, the idea won't leave me alone. I have ideas I've had for seven years. You know, it just keeps coming back around. Um, I get excited. Like I feel my energy level. I literally have an increased energy. Yes. Yeah. So some of the some some of the signs I call the resonance radar. It means that you are resonant with that idea. Again, you're more. So you have two things in resonance. You have two energy waves, and separate, they don't have as much energy. But when you put them together, it's amplified. And dissonance is the other. So if we're going towards my whole first thirty six years of my life yes. was going towards ideas that weren't bringing me alive. I was trying to push through and make them work, which is exhausting. But yes. now it's like, oh, this turns me on. Let's go here. And I happen to have been very successful doing that. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's um, I often talk about when people ask me that question because they'll sometimes go into, how do I know the difference between intuition and fear? You know, when I'm, gosh, is this oh. something I should go towards? And one of my go-to tools is do I feel expansive? or contracted. Oh, like that's, that's it. On a very subtle body level. Yes. So really paying attention inside. And anytime, even if something looks great on paper and the people are legitimate or whatever the mm-hmm. opportunity might be, if there's something in me that's st- like on a yeah, super subtle level yeah. goes like this, I'm like, that's probably a no for me. 
a no at least for now, yeah. where if I think about that thing and something in me starts to expand or like you said, come yeah. alive or the energy rises, I'm like, you know what? It doesn't seem logical. Seems yeah. kind of crazy, but I'm doing it. <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's it. Yeah. It's so wonderful. So this idea that you have, um, radical resonance. Talk yeah. to me about how this now guides your life and your business. Yeah, what I realize are that going towards these ideas that bring me aliveness are actually like, so So what is it? It's not about success because I'm actually turned on. You know what I'm saying? I'm having fun and I'm turned on. So I'm not worried about the end goal. Like if I'm going to make a gazillion dollars, to me, I, I say money's a side effect. Yeah. Right? So whenever I'm going towards these alive ideas, I'm I'm abundant. That's just what happens. And I'm also not attached to whether it works or not. Usually it does because they are alive and they keep growing and manifesting. Um, but I, I came about writing this book. It's called The Art of Aliveness. So it's a it's a book about success, but it's an inside out success. It's it, I believe success is an inside job. Yes. So let me be turned on and alive and vibrant, and then the you know the the world out there gets to delight in this this offering, right? And what you're doing, it yes. turns you on. Like Absolutely. It's, yeah. And, and look how many people you're waking up and bringing aliveness to. It's because of that amplification. Yeah. Some of the ideas that we have for Marie TV, I'll often tell the team, um, we're doing them because they're fun. Like, I want to do them. There's absolutely yeah. nothing useful about us wearing costumes or wigs or, you know, singing around and acting like idiots in front of a green screen. I'm like, but it brings us so much joy. That's it. And that joy transfers out. And that is transformative. And it's tangible in your brand. People yes. say, how do you do that? How do you have the cult following? Well, you have to because, you know, it's kind of cliche, but you're putting good energy in. Yep. So what happens? You have good energy that's out put. Yeah. It's really actually pretty simple. And I love that you also now, if I heard you correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that you run your company this way, yeah. that it's part of your culture where you guys are evaluating strategy and you're, you're evaluating initiatives or ideas uh, with a, a very successful X hundred million dollar company. Yeah. Um, and everyone is on board with this, huh? Everyone. I yeah, love because it. they know. So what happens is whenever we have a project that doesn't work out, yes. we don't do a play by play. We kind of go in and go, where did we when did we know that we were in struggle? <laughs> yes. And everyone can identify the moment that we were trying to push through because we wanted to get something. So now, like in our product development meetings, like you'll see someone raise their hand and 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 they'll say, Are we in struggle? And everyone will kind of evaluate, no, not yet. And if we are in struggle, it doesn't matter how much, like we've had projects that we've put, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a year and a half of work in that literally like a Zen, you know, sand painting that the Zen masters do, they just wipe away. It's like, okay, next. Because we know that, I always say I don't know what I'm doing in business. It's just because I can figure anything out, yes. right? So every day I don't know what problem I'm going to be faced with. It's all new every single day. I've never ran a company this big. <laughs> so to say I know what I'm doing, it's like, really? Um, but what I, what I say is I don't know how this is all going to work out, but as long as we're growing and we're having fun, like we're growing personally, professionally, and we're having fun, it doesn't really matter. We can look back and be like, Oh, yeah, that was a great ride. Exactly. Right? And that's it. Yep. And we're happy. We don't have to wait till the end goal or whatever it is to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. No, you and I, we're like soul sisters. Yeah, I can tell. It, it's, it's a ton. And I do want to say, too, just I want to commend you guys publicly. Anytime I've interacted with your brand as a customer and as a fan, mm. the copy and the tone and just the spirit and soul mm. is so well expressed through everyone. So I just want to commend you on that because it is not an easy feat. Thank you. So and really we well do done. that backwards too. So we have – people know who Poopery is. Yeah. We talk about it as her. Yes. That everybody knows her, you know, and they know what she would do, what she would say, and what she wouldn't do and wouldn't say. It's her and ideal it it so customer easy. avatar and it's the person. Yes. Yeah. It's Absolutely. like that's who she is. That's who she is. Yeah. And everybody knows her so intimately. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, but it's because they all love her her as well. Susie, you are an inspiration. I am so excited mm. to continue our relationship. Yeah, and I know everyone's going to just love this conversation. So thanks for coming out today. This mm, is beautiful. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you for pioneering this amazing world. <laughs> Now, Susie and I would love to hear from you. So we talked about so many beautiful things today. What's the single biggest insight that you're taking away from this conversation? And most importantly, how can you put it into action right now? Now, as always, the best conversations happen over at the magical land of marieforleo.com. So head on over there and leave a comment now.
And once you're there, be sure to subscribe to our email list and become an MF Insider. You'll get instant access to an audio we created called How to Get Anything You Want, plus some exclusive content, special giveaways, and personal updates from me that I just don't share anywhere else. Stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world needs that special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Marie TV. Ready to find your voice and sell with heart? We'll show you how. Get started now with our free writing class at thecopycure.com. Side effects include enlarged profits. When you're on a track, you're either, you're just, you're just a straight runner or you're a hurdler. And an entrepreneur knows the hurdles are going to be there. Yes. And that's what we do. That's like, all and you we know, do. you just jump them, right? Everything is figureoutable, baby. It's all figureoutable. Yes. I loved when you said that. I was like, yes.